Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thanks to all the 5,000 subscribers, it means a lot to me. If you haven't yet subscribed, kindly do so and hit the bell button to get notified when new videos are posted. My goal is to help you get fully funded scholarships to study abroad. I believe in you. Let's do this together. In this video, I will focus on bachelor's and graduate scholarship at University of Victoria in Canada. As you already know, my videos are step by step, so you could follow along with me and you don't need anybody for guidance once you follow i'll give you the tips and i'll share all the resources you need to make your applications a success the first thing you do is to go to google.com and just type university of victoria canada the first link you just have to click on the first link and it takes you to the university's website for most scholarships or for most schools, if you are looking for something about studying abroad, the first place you go is academics. There's also the admissions, but it's basically the same as academics. So, or we could go to admissions because this is broken down, but I'll go to academics. We look at their faculties, division, and services. So there's the first one. It shows you all the faculties they have. So based on, on your area of studies, you could choose one. I will start with the undergraduate admission. So we go here for undergraduate admissions. Then you can find a program that's of interest to you. You could see all the programs they have. Let's look at health and life sciences and I'll go to biology and psychology. So they give you a quick overview of what the program is about, some of the careers you can do if you study this program so let's look at the admission there's some admissions so the english language proficiency some universities will not um will, you will not have to submit any exams so if you are from a recognized english speaking country we could look at that so here you have to search for your country so as you can see if you studied in Ghana, you will not need um, to provide that. If you studied in Nigeria, you don't need to provide that. Namibia. So this is good. It's good. Zambia, Zimbabwe. So you don't have to provide anything. But now, as you know, our focus is on scholarships. Once we've seen the programs, the proficiency test, now we need, we are looking for scholarships. Please take your time and read about all this so when it comes to scholarships you could go to finances scholarships and funding so there are different kinds of scholarships but our focus as you can see they have 5.1 million dollars in entrance scholarships so this is the amount they have to spend for people who want to study in the university 5.1 million dollars my goal is that you get part of this amount of money so we are mostly international students. So you click international students. And as you can see, there's tons of them. So for the eligibility, it's very important that by March 15 to be assessed for international scholarships. So this is an important date. And these are the scholarships that are available. But I want us to focus on the international entrance scholarships. So 20 scholarships of 10,000 each are awarded to academically outstanding. So you really need to have good grades. And by March 15, there's the International IB Scholarship. All are March 15th. So please take your time and um, read more about these. But we could look at the, the entrance scholarship submissions. So these are the dates, the deadlines. As you can see, most of them are March 15th to so international students this is a very important deadline for you so for undergrad just read through you don't necessarily have to submit any extra documents how to apply very easy no application required you just have to submit a good document and once you submit a good document you are good so the day that should be of important to you is to submit your document by march 15th and you are good the eligibility so all you need is good grades so it's very easy just putting an application and uh, you are good to go so now we are, we'll go back again to the graduate scholarships so we could go back to the main home tab you just click on the main home tab it will bring you back 
you go to academics faculties and divisions graduate admissions so what do you have find a program let's choose a program that will be of interest let's look at business economics and law i'll go for let's look at economics so for the economics they have a masters of arts in economics and a phd and you also have a co-op so with the co-op what happens is she could study in school so once you study you get money so this is also a very good alternative so if you want me to make more videos about to give you details about what this co-op entails let me know in the comment section so i'm going to choose a master's of arts in economics and let's see what you need so and as you can see you need to find a supervisor to be able to study don't worry about this if this is what is scaring you don't worry because they have all the details of the people you need you look at their research interest as you can see everybody on their research interest so decide on what is your research interest and send them a code email and the good thing is i've already created a code email template which i've gotten a lot of feedback that people have received a response so all you have to do is to go to my channel and type code email that will be the first video you will see i create don't copy it word for word but i've explained the concept behind that to so use that to use that to frame something for yourself so this is it how to send a code email which is really good so i suggest you use that you identify a professor in your research interest and you send him a code email please also make time to read a bit about her website her, her, her website read a bit of her papers to help you draft a good code email and don't send the email to everybody just wait send one wait for two weeks if they don't respond you go to the next one so that's it to find a supervisor the program details if you are ready to apply you could apply now or you could read more about how to apply and one thing you should know is every program and their requirements so this might not be the same for everybody so look at the one that is of interest to you and read about it so now let's look at another department education and family let's look at health information science for this i'm going to look at a phd in health informatics what do you need to apply it's also the same thing you need a supervisor so you do the same thing and let me look let's look at the how to apply so how to apply you choose a program which we've already done you find a supervisor i've showed you how to find a supervisor and how to send an email for them to agree to supervise you then you apply for admissions and as you can see the admission fee is 172 card in canada normally they do not have waivers but i always would suggest that send the school an email to ask if they could give you a waiver you check your application status and you accept your offer as you can see it's not difficult the steps are easy choose a program which you already know you find a supervisor i've shown you how to do it then you apply for admission you look at your status and you accept your offer and this is good because once you find a supervisor you have a higher chance of being accepted to the university so if you have any question like an example was like if you want for the waiver this will be a per this person you have to contact so i suggest like if you have any questions go to this person and um, they will give you an offer so what you could also do that like, let's look at the the fundings they have so you go to finances and this is a scholarship so they have a scholarship of up to seventeen thousand five hundred per year for masters and twenty thousand per year for phd so this is what they offer every year uh, so you could get a fellowship of this amount or you could get a graduate award of this amount which is also really good 
And also one thing is once you also do your research assistantship or TA assistantship, there's still extra money you could get to survive. So your eligibility, you have to be an international student. You need an A- minus average on your last two years of coursework. That's a good thing. They are not interested in your entire four years. They just need your last two years. So even if you don't do well generally, if you have good grades for your last two years, you are good. So and the good thing is that you don't have to apply. You are automatically considered. And there are other external awards and fellowships you could use. So teaching assistantship, I will always advise that make time and read this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If you have any hurdles, let me know in the comment section. If this video was helpful to you, let me know in the comment section. If you would like videos of this kind, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Um, thank you very much. I'm wishing you all the best, and I'm rooting for you. Have a good day. Bye.